Good day, good day, Spartan Willie here, and welcome back to the channel. Today, we've got our race review of the Australian Grand Prix. All right, I hope you're having a fantastic day. So, we're just going to go through our race review for the Australian Grand Prix. I want to make this video significantly shorter than 15 minutes. It's just too long to talk, and I feel like I repeat myself quite a bit throughout the video. So, we're going to work on slimming down the length of the video. If you watch the Red Bull series, you will know that I attended this Grand Prix. So, I'm going to put up some footage that I took. It's not the best footage, it's just on my phone, but you know, it might be a little bit of fun just in the background of this video but if you enjoy these race reviews make sure to leave a like consider subscribing if you haven't already and leave any thoughts feedback suggestions in the comment section below i'd love to know your feedback on the series but let's get into it all right first cab off the rank is alfa romeo now i heard from multiple people last race at saudi arabia that i was very harsh on them and i agree i think a d was very rough they were unlucky so i'm gonna up them to a c i still think it's a bit it's a bit much to give them any more than a c due to the dnf but that's fine we'll move on to this week now so valtteri bottas eighth zero granu in 11th quite a good race for them good hold of points of four not as good as the first race but i think they'll be very happy to be consistently in the points this season so for that reason i'm going to give them a b alpha tari now this is a team that's been flying under the radar for me in this season they've just been sort of there but they picked up ninth place with gasly and 15th with Yuki Sonoda. So it wasn't the best race for them. They would have probably liked more points, but they picked up two. So I'm probably going to give them a C minus, just below their average of, you know, wanting to pick up a, probably a handful of points a race. Alpine. Now, Alpine, I've given them C for the last two races, so I'm wary that I don't want to keep giving them Cs. Ocon in seven, Alonso in 17th. Obviously, this is a race review, but I'll also put in an absolute amazing performance in qualifying until he unfortunately crashed out. So I don't want to be too harsh on them because they were unlucky with some of the timing in the race. And Alonso did pit at the end there to try and go for a faster slap. So I'm probably going to just give them a C again. I mean, they're seventh place. That's six points. It's not too bad at all for them. Uh, pretty consistent with the other races. And Alonso got a bit unlucky this weekend. Aston Martin. Now, this team this weekend was a bit embarrassing, to be honest. I had a couple mates that came down who weren't the biggest Formula 1 fans, and they were laughing at Aston Martin. By the way, that's the first time I've seen that car in real life. Looks amazing, but that car was in the wall a lot this weekend. Vettel had a problem every day of of the weekend really friday saturday sunday first of course wasn't his fault it was something wrong with the car Stroll got a penalty in the race and crashed out in quality those poor mechanics but on a race level as well it's just an f i mean it's been an f weekend for them they're now the only team without a point after williams amazing strategy which we'll get into later but yeah f faster man day lawrence Stroll is going to be human after that one now ferrari were a bit of a mixed team this weekend the clear obviously won the race he put in an awesome shift on the track we could see him just zoom past and then verstappen would come past which felt like an eternity later it just slowly grew by the lap you could see it was awesome he negotiated multiple restarts as well which just put in an absolute shift while signs had a bit of a horror weekend obviously crashing out on lap two after an incident trying to overtake they were a bit unlucky this weekend with signs and leclerc was amazing so probably b minus haas are our next team now 13th for mick schumacher 14th for magnuson Magnussen's strategy was ruined by the safety car, which is a bit unlucky. It was a bit of a reality hit for them. Obviously, they got points in the first two races. This is the first race at that point, so we can't be too harsh on them considering where they're coming from last season. These ratings are respective, so we're going to give them a C. McLaren with the homeboy Daniel Ricciardo. Now, this has been a very good weekend for McLaren, I believe. Good race. To finish fifth with Norris and sixth with Daniel is exactly where McLaren will want to be after the first two races being very rough. So this is a good return for them. Good haul of points with 18. And really, they were battling with the Mercedes there for a lot of the race at the start there. Just following them. Just didn't have quite enough pace to get past. So we're going to give them an A-. minus. Now, on to Mercedes. So third with Russell, fourth with Hamilton. Russell will be wrapped to this podium. They were quite solid in this Grand Prix. Obviously got a bit fortunate with Verstappen retiring. And considering that they got the same result back in Bahrain, and I gave them a C minus, but I think the outlook has changed a bit for Mercedes now. They understand that they're not at the pace, they're just trying to develop the car, get more used to it, and try and get some decent results. I think they looked rapid this weekend. Obviously, I wasn't at the track for the other races, so I don't know how it compares, but they were actually very competitive. And uh, only Russell only finished five seconds off Perez in the end, so 
I think they'd still like to be higher, obviously, because Mercedes, they've won eight of these things in a row. I think they'll be happy with the progress made this weekend, so we're just going to give them a C plus. What is going on with the Red Bull Power Unit? I do not know, but they've now finished half of their races. They've entered with both their cars, obviously both going out race one, both finished race two, and then Verstappen going out. But Perez finishing in a solid second in this race, but Verstappen is obviously a bit dejected. I saw his post-race interview where he talks about being so far behind Leclerc already. It's not a good vibe around the Verstappen garage at the moment, but from a team perspective, it's also a bit of an L this weekend because they lost ground to Mercedes and obviously to Ferrari. It will help them a bit that Science didn't finish the race as well on the Ferrari front, but Mercedes 10 points ahead, and it seems like having a reliable car that finishes races is better than a rapid car that has a 50% chance of finishing a race. Red will get a C. Williams, now quite a unique strategy this weekend with Alexander Elbon, as we all know. He completed about 57 laps on the hard set of tire from the start, and then pitted like a lap before the race is over, because he has to, obviously. But they did get a point, so they're on the board this season. Let's see if down in 16th which is pretty standard for them, but they'll be very happy to pick up a point because that means that they move to ninth officially, not just because they're on equal points with Aston Martin. But overall, I think we're going to give them a B because points are always good for Williams. Top three drivers of the race. Now, Alexander Albon is going to be our third place, picks up one point this week. Obviously, to drive that many laps on one set of tires, even if it's the Haas, is very impressive. And to guide at home, into a points paying position maybe got a bit lucky but you earn your luck second george russell awesome work from him to get the podium kept lewis behind i would assume that lewis would have overtaken russell if he had the opportunity but uh maybe not but russell still did an amazing effort to finish within five seconds of paris the guy's just fast and i don't like giving the first spot to whoever wins the race but how can you give it to anyone else but charles leclerc driver of the weekend the gaps that he just kept creating after the restart were quite impressive how quick he did them. You may say the car's fast, but he still deals with all the pulpacing, still keeps it on the track and looks after the car. So, I mean, Charles Leclerc is driver of the week. On to team of the round. Now, you may say this is biased, but I'm going to give it to McLaren. I think this has been a great little race for them to show that they're... They actually do have pace because I sort of lost hope after the first couple races of the season. They weren't looking great, but they come home in a solid fifth and sixth. They'll be happy with that. I'm happy with that. It was great seeing Danny actually finish an Australian Grand Prix. On to race score. Now, I may be, again, a bit biased here, but I thought that the race was very good. I enjoyed every aspect of the weekend as well. Qualifying was very entertaining. The track's actually quite difficult, and I think the changes have been awesome. Who would have thought that consulting a racing driver would result in the track becoming 10 times better if you didn't know Daniel Ricciardo was a consultant in the track design, uh, redesign, sorry. So overall, I think we're going to give it an A. It was entertaining, and it was just great having the Grand Prix back in Australia. It's been very missed, I can tell you firsthand. So here's the upgraded team gradings. Now, as you can see, Ferrari, obviously the front runner in the average column with an A minus average, which is pretty good. Took a slight hit with the B this week, but the Alfa Romeo also up there as well. Obviously it's all respective. So that's why it may seem harsh in some teams and better for other teams. But um, all respective to pretty much last year and what the team's expectations are, in my opinion. Red Bull at a C minus. I think that's a pretty fair assumption. They are competitive, but they got some reliabilities issues to work out. And obviously, Aston Martin have had a bit of a horror start to the season, represented by two Fs. But let me know what you think of these gradings down in the comment section below. We can always change them a little bit. So, team of the race and drive of the race. We finally filled out the team of the race. After three races, three different teams have won it. That was not deliberate. It's just how it worked out. Ferrari still leading. Obviously, with both these, the tiebreaker is who got it first. So if they're equal in points, who was already in the standings? Hence why K-Mag is still in second. But down the list, we do have a little list here. So Charles, Max, Kevin, and then Lando and George also on two points. And Zoe Guan Yu and Alex Albon on the one point. So that's sort of the entire standings, but the top three are on screen now. But that'll be all for this episode. So I hope you've enjoyed this race review. I've successfully cut down the time of it significantly. I hope you enjoyed all the footage as well, but that'll be all. If you enjoyed, please make sure to leave a like, consider subscribing, and leave any thoughts, feedback, suggestions in the comment section below. I'll see you in the next one.